Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, I am Mr. Rain, and if you thought I was going to be quiet on this topic, then you are sorely mistaken. Today we are talking about Blizzard and the ban that they had given to Blitzchum. And so I did a little bit of research, not a whole lot, to uh, just try and get a decent timeline and then take things from there. So starting with the first event, somewhere around October 8th, Blizzard bans Hearthstone player Blitzchung for one year and as well as taking back the prize money. But along with that, they also fired the two broadcasters that were interviewing Blitzchung after him winning the tournament. On October 10th, there were reports that Blizzard staff were boycotting the ban, as well as setting up their own little Hong Kong protest of sitting in the middle, you know, sitting outside with umbrellas, the typical flag, not flags, but the typical icons that you typically see during the Hong Kong protest. Then on October 11, Blizzard reduces the ban on Blitzchung for six months, as well as giving back the prize money, and they, at the same time, they also bring back the broadcasters, but put them on a six-month ban as well, instead of being fired. So those are the three key events. There are there is another event that did develop, which was uh, an American team that set up their own little protest by showing the Hong, you know, the free Hong Kong on a whiteboard. And then they got banned about a week or two later, unlike uh, Blitzchung, who got banned literally the next day, if not immediately after that broadcast. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's begin. Blizzard does have a rule about this, although it is very bland. It does need to be rewritten. Essentially, the way the rule is written out, you could say anything and get banned for it. It's just that openly expressed. Anything that could be considered sensitive can be considered, can get you a ban. It's essentially how it's written. It doesn't have to be political, it doesn't have to be religious. It can be something that you hate vegans or you hate a vegetarian diet. And just for saying that, you can't get banned. And apparently they're going to set the sta statute for it being six months. However, the primary ban, which is the one that everyone got upset about, was the one year ban as well as removing the prize money. And again, the same thing, taking away taking away the careers of two different broadcasters due to this one event. To give you more reference, Blitzchung was doing his protest for the Hong Kong movement, which again, if you haven't, if you've been living under a rock, then you, pre you should know this by now. Because of the location that this event was taking place in and all that, that's why these players were severely punished. Now, Blizzard did come out and say that it was not because of China, but to be honest, the way that the bans were put out, it makes no sense if it wasn't under the influence of China. What he did is not necessary. What he did was a protest. What he did in regards to being a professional player is unacceptable in regards to playing on a professional field or on a professional broadcast of Blizzard. It's not to say that he can't protest. He definitely can, and he can do so on his own streams, on his own channels on his own Twitter, social media, and whatever, but not to use Blizzard as the mainstay to do the same thing. Uh, if you can remember a few years back, we can go back to Colin Kaepernick doing pretty much the same thing on the NFL and him getting blasted for it. Essentially, his career went up in smoke, and we can blame it on whoever we want, but at the end of the day, his numbers decreased over the time, and no one was interested in him after that season. In one way or another, it is his fault, depending on how you look at it. Whether you want to blame his stats or whether you want to blame his protest. But either way, he wasn't banned for it. He didn't, as far as I know, he wasn't really punished for it. It's just, essentially, he made a move. A lot of people disliked it. And that's about it. And so we see the difference in regards to penalty and punishment from that example to this. Blitzchung shouldn't really be facing a whole lot of penalty, and even a six-month penalty is very exaggerated. In my mind, I would feel that at the most he would have a two, maybe three-month ban, but he would still own all of his prize money. The broadcasters, the only thing I would do to broadcasters is retrain them. That's it. I wouldn't necessarily ban them. I would retrain them. Maybe give them a week off, or maybe give them two weeks off, but they are broadcasters. They're not intentionally, you know, protesting in the middle of your matches and things to that degree. 
you know, give them a very stern warning and let them know that they will be banned for two or three months if they do so ever again. And yeah. Now, that being said, just because I support a ban to some degree does not mean that I don't support Blitzchung or the Hong Kong protest. I do. I support Blitzchung. I support the Hong Kong protest. I want to be clear on that. Just to add to that, it has to be done in its own field, in its own way. I don't feel that you should be able to protest or speak your political or religious beliefs on the stage of on a company stage. I don't think that's where those talks should be taken. I feel that again, that should be taken on a more personal level and on a level that, you know, you can still interact with your fans, but you're not really doing it in front of, you know, you're not doing it on behalf of a company. And that's what it can look like, you know, if you do it on a company's stream or on a company's channel. Now, we can go into murky water in regards to, you know, Hong Kong should be free and they shouldn't be under China rule and the politics of China. Definitely, we can talk about that and we can say that, you know, human rights and things that we live in and take for granted in the USA are not the same as it is in China. And that can also be said for a number of different countries. I mean, we can make this a whole entire battle, a whole entire political statement but that's not where i'm going with this i'm simply going at this at a pr professional look you know from the outside looking in from a professional standpoint you don't want nfl players taking a knee during the anthem Pro you don't want to see blitz chung or anyone protesting about anything or any topic you don't want people re expressing their religious beliefs you don't want people protesting or not protesting but you know people talking about their religious beliefs people talking about their political beliefs because that does turn people off and it is a negative light. I don't know, in my mind, something like video games shouldn't be taken politically unless that is the stamp, unless that is the point of that video game to be political. But if it's not, then politics shouldn't really stand in it. Uh, same with any other topic that can be taken, you know, sensitively, but again, not in the words or terms that Blizzard uses, because that's very, very, broad i mean there's not really a whole lot more that i can say that's really my opinion and my stance on it feel free to boycott blizzard all you want i think that uh they will backpedal when they have to like we saw this time and that the situation that's in china is very complex it's not something that i'm ever going to fully understand until years later when everything's documented Hopefully it does get documented and it doesn't get swept under the rug like many other things that happen in China. But aside from that, that's about all I have to say. I am Mr. Ray. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video enjoyable. And if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you want any more clarity as to what I stand for or what I think about this situation, feel free to uh, discuss it with me in the comments below. So until next time, I'll see you guys then.